Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tanika and in today's video I am going to be testing out Kmart makeup brushes. So they have a range of brushes in the OXX Studio collection and they range from the $4 to $10 price range. A while ago I did a video testing out Kmart makeup using all OXX Studio products so I will link that down below if you haven't seen it. I also have a whole playlist dedicated to Kmart so go check that out obviously. I did create this whole look using only Kmart brushes so if you want to see how it went and if I think that they're even worth your money then stay tuned. Okay, so I picked up five brushes from the OXX Studio range and one sponge. First up we have the Buffing Complexion Brush. Next is the Large Powder Brush. And this one is the Large Angled Powder Brush. Next is the All Over Shadow Brush. And lastly, this one is just called the Eyeshadow Brush. And then the sponge I went with is kind of this longer, slim style. So with the brushes, as you can see, they do have different packaging. These ones were only $4 each and they do look a little bit more cheap. Whereas these ones were $10 each and the packaging does look a little bit more luxe. I'm going to start off by going and wetting my sponge. Right now, with it being dry, it is quite firm. I'm going to be comparing it to a beauty blender a lot because that is one of my favorite sponges. So it has pretty much doubled in size. It is pretty bouncy, but it still has a little bit of stiffness to it. And when I look at it compared to my beauty blender, the beauty blender seems a little bit more porous and spongy, whereas this I know the only way I know how to describe it is kind of firm. So first up, I'm going to be going in with the Buffing Complexion Brush. Now this one says it's for applying powder and liquid foundations. It has dense synthetic bristles, perfect for blending and contouring. They feel quite nice and they have the name of the brush written on the handle here, which is a nice touch for something that's so affordable. The bristles do feel really soft and as you can see, they're quite flexible. Usually for foundations, I would go in with a Kabuki style brush. So this is my Sigma Flat Kabuki. And as you can see, this one is just a bit more dense. Now I'm going to go in with a primer. If you don't like applying your primer with your fingers, you could definitely also use this brush. Because it is quite flexible, it's going to blend the product around very easily. It feels really, really soft on the skin. So when I'm doing foundation, I like to apply it to my face like this, and then I'm going to go in with the brush, and I like to do stippling motions, so patting up and down. I find that blending the foundation, I just don't get as smooth of a finish. So that's why I like to go in and just pat up and down. Okay, so far it's blending the foundation out nicely and it's not leaving any streak marks in it, which is nice. I kind of like that it's a bit flexible because I feel like it's easier to get around the crevices of your nose and in my chin here as well. Oh, I do have a little bit of shedding here. I just had one of the brush hairs on my lip. Looking at the brush though, it doesn't look like it has absorbed too much product. So that's great because it's staying on my skin and this little thing isn't stealing all of it. The other side, I'm going to go in with the sponge and blend it out and see how this performs. Okay, so it definitely feels quite firm on the skin but it's actually giving really nice coverage. It's not soaking up too much product. Mm. I feel like the sponge has actually given better coverage. I'm going to go in with a little bit of product on the sponge and just go over this side. All right, I'm going to go in with the brush again on my forehead and then I'll smooth it out with the sponge, 
which is what I usually like to do anyway. The brush is just a little bit softer than the sponge, so I do like it. Okay, I am really happy with the finish of my foundation. So now I'm going to go in with concealer and I'll blend that out with the sponge. All right, I'm actually liking the sponge. The only downfall for me is that it's a little bit stiff. So it does feel a little bit hard, especially under the eyes. I do like that it has pointed edges though, because as you can see, you can get right up into those inner corners and really close to your lower lash line to blend out that concealer. I also feel like the sponge isn't soaking up a lot of product, which is good. All right, base is looking good. Now, I usually like to set under my eyes with a loose powder and my damp sponge. So I just dip my sponge into my powder like that and then tap that in and blend it out. You can use this technique if you have a pressed powder as well. Just rub your sponge in it and set under the eyes. I really like it because I feel like it keeps the under eyes quite hydrated. I also like to take it over my nose with the sponge and on my chin. I also feel like it really presses the powder into the skin so it's setting your makeup really well. So moving on to the next brush, this is the large powder brush. It says it's for applying foundation, not sure about that, bronzers and highlighters. Soft synthetic two-tone bristles for a flawless finish. Okay, so I have to disagree with what it says about applying foundation and highlighters. This brush, as you can see, is super fluffy and super soft. So you are not going to get a nice application of a foundation because it's just going to move everything around it's not dense enough to be a foundation brush. And then for highlighter, you're placing that right on the top of your cheekbones in a really precise area. So I feel like this is too big of a brush to be using for highlighter. Personally, I would use this for setting my foundation with powder. You could also use it for a bronzer or a blush brush. Now just taking a look of it, there are some loose bristles popping out just over here. I'm not sure if you can see that. Just trying to pick them out but they're actually pretty pretty sturdy so I'll just leave them it feels really soft so I'm going to go in with a pressed powder and set the rest of my face all right it's picking up the product well you can see the powder on the brush and I'm just going to lightly tap that on the rest of my face Next, I have the Large Angled Powder Brush, and this one says it's for applying foundation. Again, no. Bronzers, blush, and highlighters. Soft, synthetic, two-tone bristles for a flawless finish. Okay, so as you can see, this one is cut on an angle, and again, it is really, really fluffy. So it's not going to be ideal for applying foundations. This kind of brush I would personally use for applying contours, bronzers, and blush powders. So one side of my face, I'm going to use the angled brush to apply my bronzer, and the other side of my face, I will use the large powder brush to apply my bronzer. Again, the large powder brush is picking up the product nice and evenly. So I'm just going to gently go in with back and forth motions and blend that out. Now, some cheaper brushes that I've tried in the past actually struggle to keep the product on the brush and actually apply it to your skin. For example, I was using this e.l.f. brush once and I was dipping and dipping and dipping into my bronzer and I was getting hardly anything on the skin. So they're the kind of problems you can have with more affordable brushes. This one though, I think is doing a great job. As you can see, the bronzer is applying to my skin nicely and it's blending out really well. There is no patchiness at all. <laughs> yes. A nice big brush like this as well is going to give you a more diffused look. And then the other side, I'll be using my angled brush. You can see the product on the brush there. And again, just back and forth motions to blend that out. Okay, that's also applying really nicely. I'm hoping you can see the difference here. On the side where I've used the angled brush, I feel like the product is 
placed more specifically and you can see that it's not as diffused. And then on the side where I've used the bigger fluffy brush, you can see that the lines aren't as harsh in the contours of my face. Now, if you also like to contour with a powder, then this angle brush will be really good because it fits really nicely in the hollows of the cheeks. All right, I am actually really, really impressed with this angled brush. So next I'm going to use it for blush. So I'm just kind of wiping off any excess onto a little tissue here. And then I'm going to dip into my blush. Let's see how it picks the product up. So you can see the little tinge of pink on the brush there. And then I'm going to pop that on the apples of my cheeks and blend it back. All right, well, I think that blended the blush out beautifully. Wow, that was a lot of bees. It blends seamlessly into the bronzer and it hasn't moved any of the foundation underneath around. It doesn't look patchy at all. I'm actually pretty impressed by these. Now, if you wanted to apply highlighter, they did have a fan brush within the collection, but I didn't pick that one up. Instead, I'm going to show you, you can use this angled brush here and I'm going to dip it into the highlighter just on the edge here. And then I can use that kind of like a fan brush and apply it to my cheekbones. Now, as I mentioned before, highlighter is more of a precise application, which is why I'm just going in with the edge of this brush. I wouldn't dip the brush right into the highlighter like this and apply because it's going to be too much product and it's going to go in places where we don't want it to go. But using the edge like this works well. If you were going to be using your brushes for multiple uses on the daily, just make sure you give them a nice good wipe before each use so that you're getting majority of that leftover product off the brush. Okay, so eyebrows are on and I have set my base. So I've put a concealer on my eyelid and then set it with a pressed powder. So as I mentioned, the two brushes I have here are the eyeshadow brush, which is more like a flat shading brush. And then this one is called the all over shadow brush. And this is kind of flat, but it's got a bit more of a fluffy head. It actually reminds me of my Sigma E25 blending brush. So these ones were a bit cheaper. They don't have the name printed on the handle at all. Now they did have a lot more options for eyeshadow brushes, but they all come in sets. And when I took a closer look at the sets, it just didn't make sense to me. Like it come with an angled brush, say to do your brows. It come with like a flat concealer brush, another kind of flat concealer brush and just something else stupid. Like it wasn't a set of brushes that you could use to do a complete eye look. So that's why I went for the individual brushes. So I'm just going to take my Makeup Geek shadows because I know how they perform and I love them. Starting off with the fluffier brush, I'm going to dip into just a nude shade and I'm going to pop this above my crease and blend it out as my transition. So first thing I noticed is that the handles are quite short. So it's a little bit uncomfortable to hold. They do feel quite soft on the eyes though. Looks a little bit patchy, but blending takes time. So let's just give it a moment. I did think this brush was going to be more rounded, kind of like this brush here. I would have preferred that because a brush like this is much easier to blend out that initial transition shade. Because this one is a bit more flat, it might take a bit of extra work. Okay, so to blend it out easier, I'm holding it this way on my eyelid. So I don't really know how to explain it. I'm holding it up, I'm not holding it horizontally. So that way the bristles are spread out more and it's going to be blending the shadow. Whereas if I had it horizontally, it's only going to be putting the color right where I place it. Whereas this way, it's going to blend it out. All right, well, that's actually blended out quite nicely and the color has built up well too. Now with the same brush, I'm going in with a bit of a deeper shade and I'm going to be holding it horizontally and placing that right in the crease. So I'm not going to be blending it up as high as I did with that first shade. 
And so because this brush is more flat, it's going to be easy to place that color down right where I want it. So I'm going to swap over to the flat shader brush and before I dip this into a shimmer, I'm going to use it to take a mixture of those mattes and blend it under the lower lash line. Now I'm going to use this brush because it's a lot smaller so it's precise. So I can get right up under there and then I can go in with the fluffier brush to blend those colors out. So now that that's blended out, I'm just going to wipe the brush down here on my tissue to get any other color off. And now I'm going to dip it into a shimmer. I might actually go into this bronzy shade by Colourpop. This is a super shock eyeshadow. So they kind of have a creamy consistency. All right, so as you can see, the product is on the brush there. I'm going to finish the rest of my makeup, be right back. Okay, so this is the finished makeup look. My overall thoughts, I would definitely recommend the face brushes. I think they felt nice and sturdy. The bristles were really soft. There was a little bit of shedding at first in the buffing brush, but I didn't have any other shedding with the others. They picked up the product really well, blended it out really well. I'm impressed and I would definitely use them again. As for the eyeshadow brushes, I personally wouldn't use them again. If you are a beginner and learning and just dabbling in makeup, then sure, give them a try. My eyeshadow doesn't look that bad, but I just know it could look better using other brushes. If you are a little bit more into your makeup and like to practice your eyeshadow, I would definitely recommend investing in some better brushes. I personally love Sigma and Zoeva brushes. I do have a video about the must-have eyeshadow blending brushes, so I will link that down below if you want to go check it out. And as for the sponge, I'm pretty sure you know how I feel. It did a great job at blending everything out. My only problem was that it felt a little bit hard. If you want to know what makeup I used, I will list that down below, and I will have all the brushes I used listed and linked below as well. If you've used these Kmart brushes before, then leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!